Hello and welcome everyone. I hope you all are fit and fine. Students, in the previous class, I told you about the different types of public sector enterprises. Okay. As we have seen, there are three different types of public sector enterprises. The first is departmental undertakings. The second is public or statutory corporations. And the third is government company. So yesterday I explained you about the first form of public sector enterprises, which is the departmental undertaking. Okay. So just quickly revise this student departmental undertaking or department undertaking. What is it? Department undertaking okay this is the oldest form of public sector under enterprise okay this is one of the form of public sector enterprise now it is very simple to understand departmental by the word itself you can identify okay departmental undertaking is considered as the departments of government okay department undertaking okay department undertakings are what the departments of government the government departments okay the government departments and these departments have no separate legal existence. Okay, these departments have no separate legal existence. It means no separation means no separation of identity means it is owned by the government as well as it is managed by the government. Okay, so here the owner as well as the manager is the same. Who is the owner and who is the manager? It is the government. Okay, it can be central, it can be state or both. Okay, so departmental undertakings are considered as the departments of government. Okay, the government departments like your railway departments, your defense department, your postal department, these are all government departments. Okay, so these are the departmental undertaking and these have no separate existence. Okay, no separate existence means uh, students that it belongs to government. Okay, so it is owned by the government and it is managed by the government as well. Okay, so do not get confusion. Okay, you will hear this term like you will hear this term again and again. No separate legal existence. Okay, no separation means the owner and the management is same. Agar wahan likha hota, there is separate legal entity. It means the owner is somebody else and the management is done by somebody else. Okay, but here the owned and the man, sorry, here the government is the one who actually owns it and manages it. Okay, so there is no separate legal entity. So this is all about departmental undertaking. Okay, so yesterday we saw the meaning of it and plus the characteristics features of departmental undertaking. Today I will explain you about its merits and demerits. Let us see what are the main advantages and disadvantages of these departmental undertakings. Okay, these public sector enterprises. Now beginning with the merits. See the first point under merits. Easy formation. Students, departmental undertaking. Okay, this is one of the type of public sector enterprise. In this, one advantage is that it is easily formed. Okay, it can it is easy to form a departmental undertaking. Why is it easy to form? Because there is no complex procedure. See, easy formation means wo kaise form hoga. Okay, generally it is a public enterprise. So kuch procedures honge. But here in departmental undertaking, there is no such complex procedure because there is no registration required okay there is no registration required so there is no complex procedure registration is not compulsory they can and they like if not then that's also fine so there is easy formation of the departmental undertaking okay there is no complex procedure as registration of the departmental undertaking is not compulsory no complex procedure is there so it is easy to form so that is a advantage now the next is effective control now effective control who has the control power students the government has the control power okay so the control on the departmental undertaking is very effective okay effective control okay it is managed very well it is managed in a good way okay why because all the powers are vested in the hands of government so when government is in government is indulged in this so definitely a what an effective way of working will be there okay as it is directed and and it is managed by the government okay the state or the central or by both so they have an effective control over it okay now 
the next is optimum utilization of funds students optimum means optimum utilization of funds means the best utilization of funds okay whatever the resources they have they use those resources in the best way okay without wasting those resources okay and without incurring more cost they use they make the use uh, they make the optimum use of the funds okay so optimum utilization of fund is there in departmental undertaking how there is proper utilization of fund okay as financial matters okay like they they deal in various financial matters like uh, making budgets okay uh, now they have to like government department like your railway departments are there many departments are there okay so they allot money to different departments okay and plus they sanction budget okay now auditing is done so many financial matters are being carried out so the funds are optimally utilized in each and every area wherever it is required okay so there is no wastage of resource financial resources okay there is best utilization of funds wherever it is needed okay according to the budget set okay everything is properly utilized now accountability one more advantage is, is accountability now see as we have studied that whenever any like for example i gave you here in the last class that railway department okay railway department has a uh, like department head okay railway department ke under unke head honge now that railway head is accountable to whom to the ministry okay railway railway head is is accountable to whom the ministry and which ministry the railway ministry means if anything goes wrong or if anything happens in the railway department then the head of the railway department is accountable to the minister the railway minister he is accountable to the railway minister so they have the direct control over these departments okay so the ministry has the direct control over this department okay because they are doing public service okay they are working for whom they are working for public okay so they are directly accountable to the public okay whatever it is there they are accountable to the minister and plus now <clears throat> whatever the things are there okay whatever if things goes wrong then the, all the matters will be decided in parliament okay all the matter will be decided in parliament okay and then after all the decisions matters will be solved okay so here accountability is an advantage now the next is public revenue now student one more advantage is public revenue now departmental undertaking as we as i already told you the departmental undertakings are the departments of the government okay so the revenue revenue means the income okay revenue means the income so the income which is earned by these departments okay these are deposited directly where to the government treasury in the government treasury okay in the government treasury as i told you in yesterday also that all the revenue okay all the revenue are deposited in the government treasury so it is the advantage like it is a advantage okay so they get public revenue now the next is secrecy students secrecy this is all this is also an advantage of departmental undertaking okay in departmental undertaking okay in these departments of government secrecy is maintained okay why secrecy is maintained because in order to avoid okay in order to avoid disclosure okay of any secret events outside okay to the public okay so all the activities which are performed by the departmental undertakings are can be high sorry can be highly secret okay everything all the matters are kept secret and government avoids it to disclose it in front of in front of the general public so all the matters are safe in this departmental undertaking okay for example uh, like the matters regarding the defense okay defense of the country so all the matters are securely kept saved under the department and they are not disclosed to the general public outside okay it's not for public interest unless and until under some some uh, circumstances it has to be revealed to the public otherwise all the secrets are kept under them only okay so these are some of the merits of departmental undertaking that is why they work effectively now let us see some of the demerits 
see what are the disadvantages of departmental undertaking the first is inflexibility inflexibility students inflexibility means what see flexibility means which is flexible which can be changed easily and inflexibility means which is rigid okay which is rigid which cannot be changed changed easily okay so inflexibility is the demerit of departmental un undertaking why because in departmental undertaking okay the work actually they work under the strict parliamentary control okay parliamentary control okay under the control they are in the they are under the control of the government okay so there is too much interference of the minister for example the ra railway department okay the railway department they have too much interference of the of their ministry means railway ministry okay so the railway department which works okay the railway department which works they have too much interference like the ministry interferes too much in the work of railway department the railway ministry will interfere too much in the work of railway department okay why because it is considered as one okay so generally there is no flexibility for them okay they are bound to do what is being told by the ministry okay they cannot do anything of their choice and plus they are uh, like they are what they are bound to follow only those which are actually passed by the ministries okay so there is inflexibility no change can be done now next is lack of motivation motivation student motivation generally means like you can say the will to work okay motivation when a person is motivated so definitely he will get the willingness to do the work okay now in these department there is lack of motivation among the employees now why there is lack of motivation among the employees the main reason is that see these are the government department okay for example the railway department the defense department these are the government department so i as i told you that all the incomes which are earned through these departments are directly deposited where in the government treasury so all the revenues all the income all the profit goes where in the government treasury so here the employees feel that they are not able to earn that much money or they are not able to, like they are not being rewarded there uh, for, uh, for like for their hard work okay they feel that they are not being rewarded for their hard work whatever the hard work they are putting in okay so they are not getting getting anything for their hard work so they are putting all their efforts they are putting all their hard work okay but in return they do not get any reward okay so they also like employees of the organization they will also try to maximize their profit right har ek individual jo bhi organization mein kaam karte hain jo bhi department government department mein kaam karte hain they also need like they also want to enjoy their प्रॉफिट ओके वो भी चाहते हैं कि वो ज़्यादा पैसे कमाएं ज़्यादा सैलरी कमाएं उन्हें भी ज़्यादा इंसेंटिव्स मिले एंड दे कैन एंजॉय देयर लाइफ ओके एंड प्लस दे कैन एंजॉय देयर वर्क टू ओके सो इन दिस वे व्हाट हैपन व्हेन ऑल द थिंग्स आर डिपॉजिट टू द गवर्नमेंट ट्रेजरी सो इट इज़ अ काइंड ऑफ लाइक देर इज़ नो मच इंसेंटिव लेफ्ट विद दैम ओके दे डो नॉट गेट मच रिवॉर्ड्स इन रिटर्न ओके सो दैट इज़ वाई बिकॉज ऑफ दीज कंडीशंस there is a lack of motivation among them and plus generally kya hota hai government department mein jo higher post pe rehte hain ya fir jinki promotion mil jati hai those who are in the senior post they enjoy all these things okay but not the workers who are in the lower level so generally they are less motivated okay they feel demotivated so there is a chance of lack of motivation among the employees okay now the next is lack of financial autonomy now student lack of financial autonomy means what see as i told you all the uh, like all the needs all the financial needs of these departments are fulfilled by the government okay the government so the government is the one who actually finances this department okay government these departments are the uh, are the government department so whatever the finance they require they get it from government okay so whenever the government declare the annual budget then they allot the money okay through the annual budget how much finance they require okay now lack of financial autonomy means these departments okay these department as i told you whatever the income is earned by these department these are directly uh, like these are directly deposited into the government 
treasury okay so they are not allowed to use their own revenue freely okay the financial autonomy as i told you here also okay it is it get directly deposited in government treasury so whatever money they are earning okay whatever the money they are earning they are not able to spend spend it for the development of the uh, their department for the development of their employees for anything okay because they have to deposit all the money to the government okay so that is the lack of financial autonomy they do not have the financial autonomy now the next is inefficient manage okay management is not efficient means the management of the department is not good they are not efficiently managed the works are not efficiently managed why because as you know the departmental undertakings are managed by the government okay the managed by the government okay so due to this what happened these officials or these the government employees are overburdened with the paperwork okay generally you will notice in every government department they are overburdened by the just the paperwork of the government okay wo busy reh jate hain sirf paperwork karne mein government ke requirements ko fulfill karne mein and they are overburdened by all these paperworks okay and they like spend really less time in like properly managing the Uh, system okay properly managing the department so like for due to these reason okay what happens they spend maximum time to to spend like they spend maximum time to fulfill the queries of the government only okay they do not focus on their they are not able to focus on themselves okay so due to all these things okay they are not able to manage their activities properly in the department because they are busy to solve the queries of the government they are busy to like they are overburdened with the paperwork of the government due to which they are they are not efficiently able to manage the department so this is a demerit for them now the next is a red tapeism and bureau bureaucracy now student red tapeism and bureaucracy what does these terms means okay see red tapeism or bureaucracy generally means delay in decision okay delay in decision as student you will might have you might have observed you might you might have seen also in reality or in movies even whenever you whenever you want to like whenever you want to get your work done by any government officials then something comes to your mind that is delay of work okay we know that if we will go to some government officials they will take time in doing our work okay so that is red tapeism and bureaucracy okay these are the departments of government okay these are the departments of government they generally de- take decisions very slow because what what is the reason of that nothing but too many formalities okay too many formalities of the government there are too many government formalities due to which all the decisions are pending due to which all the works are pending and generally and because of that the decisions are taken very slow okay no improvement is there nothing new is brought okay no innovation is there okay no quick changes are there no quick changes are there so it goes very slow all the actions are done very slowly because they have to fulfill lot of government formalities so red tapeism and bureaucracy is a great great disadvantage of these departmental und- undertaking okay red tapeism and bureaucracy means delay in decision okay delay in taking decisions due to too mo- many formalities okay so too many paperwork are there too many procedures are there formalities are there due to which they are not able to take quick decisions so this is a great demerit for them so this is all about departmental undertaking so here we studied about its meaning its characteristics features and plus its merits and demerits now student mo- will move we will move to the next next form of public sector enterprises which is the public or it is also known as the statutory corporations okay let us see this form of enterprise public enterprise in detail now okay so the second type or second form of public sector enterprise is statutory corporations is statutory corporations now carefully read the explanation statutory corporations it is established under a special act passed in parliament or state legislative assembly okay its objectives powers and functions its objectives 
powers and functions are clearly defined in the special act now students in the parliament special acts are passed okay now agar suppose uh, फॉर एग्ज़ाम्पल अगर कोई लॉ बनाना होता है तो लॉ अगर कोई एक बनाना है या फिर एक लॉ लाना है ओके okay, तो उस लॉ को पार्लियामेंट में पास किया जाता है ओके एंड थ्रू दैट इफ द लॉ इज पास एंड द एक्ट्स आर मेड ओके देन द एक्चुअल लॉ कम्स इन टू वर्क ओके एक्चुअल लॉ कम्स इन टू एक्शन ओके सो बहुत सारे ऐसे डिसीजनस होते हैं या फिर बहुत सारे ऐसे चीज़ें होती हैं जो कि पार्लियामेंट के अप्रूवल से होती है वेन दी पार्लियामेंट पास दैट एक्ट ओके देन इट टेक्स एक्चुअली टेक्स शेप ओके वट देन दिस स्टेटरी कॉपरेशन ओके दीज स्टेटरी कॉपरेशन आर द कॉरपोरेट बॉडी ओके दीज आर द कॉरपोरेट बॉडी विच आर जनरली एस्टैब्लिश ओके दीज आर जनरली एस्टैब्लिश और दीज आर जनरली फॉर्म्ड बाई द स्पेशल एक्ट ऑफ पार्लियामेंट ओके स्पेशल एक्ट पास इन द पार्लियामेंट द पार्लियामेंट और द स्टेट लेजिस्लेटिव असेंबली विल पास अ स्पेशल एक्ट ओके अंडर सम स्पेशल सर्कमस्टांसेस ओके वेन दीज एक्ट्स आर पास देन ओनली दीज पब्लिक कॉरपोरेशन आर फॉर्म ओके इफ द एक्ट इज नॉट पास बाय द पब लाइक पार्लियामेंट देन द देन दीज टाइप ऑफ पब्लिक कॉरपोरेशन और स्टैचुटरी कॉरपोरेशन आर नॉट फॉर्म ओके सो वेन एवर अ स्पेशल एक्ट इज पास और एक्ट पास कब होगा फॉर स्पेशल रिक्वायरमेंट जब उसकी ज़रूरत होगी ओके जब किसी चीज़ की ज़रूरत होगी तभी एक एक्ट पास किया जाएगा और तभी वो कॉरपोरेशन बिल्ड होगा ओके सपोज कोई डिपार्टमेंट लाइक दे फील दैट दे वॉन्ट दिस डिपार्टमेंट ओके एक डिपार्टमेंट चाहिए या एक रेगुलेटरी बॉडी चाहिए एक एरिया को मॉनिटर करने के लिए तो तो पार्लियामेंट में वो एक्ट पास की जाएगी येस अ कॉरपोरेट बॉडी कैन बी फॉर्म्ड टू रेगुलेट दिस एरिया सो ड्यू सो वेन द पार्लियामेंट पास द स्पेशल एक्ट देन दीज टाइप ऑफ कॉरपोरेशन आर फॉर्म्ड ओके दीज टाइप ऑफ पब्लिक कॉरपोरेशन आर फॉर्म्ड ओके स्टेटरी कॉरपोरेशन आर नॉन और ऑल्सो नॉन एज द पब्लिक कॉरपोरेशन ओके दीज आर ऑल्सो नॉन एज द पब्लिक कॉरपोरेशन नाउ what is the main objective see its main objectives powers and functions are clearly defined in the special act when the act is passed then all the powers all the functions of these corporations are defined in the act only now what are the corporations let us see some example unit trust of india okay uti life insurance company lic gail sci fci okay like food corp fci is food corporation of India. Okay, so these are the different type of statutory corporation. These are all the different types of corporate body. And these corporate bodies are formed when कब ये corporate bodies बनाए जाते हैं जब उनके लिए कोई special act pass किया जाता है parliament, जब इनकी ज़रूरत पड़ती है और हमें लगता है कि हाँ ये corporation या फिर ये corporate body का ज़रूरत है तब जाकर पार्लियामेंट में उसके रिगार्डिंग एक स्पेशल एक्ट पास होता है एंड देन दीज कॉरपोरेशन आर फॉर्म्ड ओके सो ऑल दीज आर द एग्जांपल्स ऑफ स्टेटरी कॉरपोरेशन और पब्लिक कॉरपोरेशन नाउ लेट अस सी द फीचर्स ऑफ इट फीचर्स ऑफ स्टेटरी और पब्लिक कॉरपोरेशन सी द फर्स्ट फीचर फॉर्मेशन बाई पासिंग एन एक्ट इन द पार्लियामेंट ओके सो हियर वी नो दैट when this statutory corporations or when this public corporations are formed it is only formed when a, when a special act is passed by the parliament or the center or the state government okay means state legislature okay legislative assembly jab yahan pe pass hoga koi act tabhi ja kar ye corporations banenge okay under the act of certain special act passed by the uh, parliament or the state or central legislature okay now the next feature is controlled by the government okay these are students all these are public enterprise so all these enterprise are controlled by whom by the government only control power will be vested in whose hand government hands okay now so the center central government as well as the state government has the control power over these statutory corporations or the public corporation now they have separate legal entity now you tell me what do you mean by separate legal entity i have explained you multiple of time separation here there is separation it means 
the owner is different and the manager is different okay so the statutory corporations are owned by somebody else and it is managed by somebody else so it has separate legal existence how it is owned means what it is incorporated okay it is formed by the act of parliament it is formed by the act of parliament okay it is formed by the act of parliament and it is managed by whom these are managed by the board of directors which are chosen by the government okay see the next line you will understand management by the board of directors okay management by the board of directors means board of directors okay board of directors are the members who are nominated by the government the government selects them okay so these are the board of the directors who are actually known as the managers okay who's that who are actually known as the managers okay so here the statutory corporation have separate legal existence they are separate why because it is formed by parliament special act of the parliament but it is managed by whom by the board of directors who are appointed by the government okay so there is a separate legal existence okay owned it is owned by somebody else and it is managed by somebody else okay so students for today we will study up to this part okay next point from next point we will see in the next class so that was it for today thank you so much